Oh, lovely rock. We stayed the night in the pathless gorge of Ventana Creek, up the East Fork. The rock walls and the mountain ridges hung forest on forest above our heads. Maple and redwood, laurel, oak, madrone, up to the high and slender Santa Lucian firs that stare up the cataracts of slide rock to the star-colored precipices. We lay on gravel and kept a little campfire for warmth. Past midnight, only two or three coals glowed red in the cooling darkness. I laid a clutch of dead bay leaves on the ember ends and felt the dry sticks across them and lay down again. The revived flame lighted my sleeping son's face and his companion's, and the vertical face of the great gorge wall across the stream. Light leaves overhead danced in the fire's breath. Tree trunks were seen. It was the rock wall that fascinated my eyes and mind. Nothing strange. Light gray diorite with two or three slanting seams in it. Smooth, polished by the endless attrition of slides and floods. No fern nor lichen. Pure, naked rock. As if I were seeing rock for the first time. As if I were seen through the flame-lit surface into the real and bodily and living rock. Nothing strange. I cannot tell you how strange. The silent passion. The deep nobility and childlike loveliness. This fate going on outside our fates. It is here in the mountain like a grave, smiling child. I shall die, and my boys will live and die. Our world will go on through its rapid agonies of change and discovery. This age will die, and wolves have howled in the snow around a new Bethlehem. This rock will be here, grave, earnest, not passive. The energies that are its atoms will still be bearing the whole mountain above. And I, many packed centuries ago, felt its intense reality with love and wonder this lonely rock.